Here we go. Season 3 already. Is this a dream? One thing at a time. <laughs> Let's get to the ocean first, how about that? Oh, is it the, the new opening? Hell yeah. I heard there's no spoilers for the first half of season three, so. Interesting. It's a lot softer than the, the other one so far. This feels totally different. It's kind of sweet. What am I watching? Is that Child Levi? Child Irwin? What is going on? This... It's gonna be interesting. I can already tell. <laughs> What's the truth? It's so interesting. It's such a great contrast. Their childhood happiness and innocence versus what we what we've been through. <laughs> I feel so sensitive. <laughs> I was all ready to get pumped up with another national anthem propaganda opening, but instead I feel like my heart chakra opened. But that's okay, I'm sure this episode will be devastating, and that'll sort that out. As a fan of media, I always appreciate it when writers take bold choices. And so, I'm kind of impressed that they decided to make this a romantic comedy. That's really cool. Look at that, they got the Cinderella slipper and everything, and the key. Smoke signal! This is not real. What is this, an alternate universe? What am I looking at? Wait, 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 wait. I was joking. I was just joking. Give me Attack on Titan back. What is this? <laughs> I've seen a lot of disturbing things in the show. I've seen Aaron's mom get bitten in half. I've seen Levi's female friend's decapitated head. I've had friends and allies betray me. This crew acting normal is the most disturbing thing I've seen so far. What is this? This is a dream, right? This is a dream sequence. Yeah. She just steal a potato? <laughs> you know, Armin. You know. Checking for Grime? Man, he's meticulous. Oh no. Someone's gonna get stomped. I'm looking at you, Aaron. <laughs> How much time has passed between season 2 and season 3? Seems like there's been a bunch of stuff that's happened. This actually makes sense at least. I feel like season 1 and season 2 happened over the span of like 4 hours. And the whole time they're just pushing Eren out into the most difficult situations. For him to actually get time to practice his powers would be a game changer. Although not necessarily for the better. Eren! He just loses face? Armin looks so adult. No pressure, Aaron. Were those people spying on them? That's something I've been wondering a lot about. It's unclear to me how much Historia knows. My guess was that her importance was some kind of dormant power connected to her lineage. But you never know. This is Attack on Titan, a world of secrets and lies. I feel like something bad just happened to that priest. It's all your fault, Aaron. This whole thing. <laughs> They've all grown up a little bit, right? Am I crazy? I'm not sure Ymir needs saving. Yeah, I was about to say, I feel like it might be just her becoming more honest. Not putting up a front. Yeah, I was totally fooled though. <laughs> I thought she was really sweet. I didn't get that impression. This, is this Eren? <laughs> what, what is this like heartfelt conversation? How much time has passed? <laughs> it was a, a long gap between seasons two and three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a bad sign. The knock on the door. Right, yeah, I'm sure it's just a robbery. Can it all be connected to his, his knowledge? Oh, 
Moblet, so protective. そんなに不思議か。お前らのような出がらしたちが手使える兵士は今忙しい。スケジュールのグレートジャブマスキングイズトゥーフィーリングス。Interesting. It seems like we're going to be returning to political intrigue this season, maybe. That's been set up really well and it's sort of been lurking under the surface. Humanity is not unified, right? There are a bunch of people with different objectives. And one thing that's become increasingly clear is that Erwin and the Survey Corps are threats to the status quo. And you can imagine that's for a bunch of reasons, right? Like, the most sinister, and maybe what we'll get into this season, is that there are people who know a lot about the state of the world and have their own selfish ambitions that Erwin threatens. But more generally, it's just, you know, like on everyday human terms, there are probably a lot of people who are comfortable. And Erwin represents change. And so people who are enjoying their, their position or way of life are gonna despise him. But this thing seems like a, a cover-up. That's what she was testing. <laughs> Don't think about why he knows that. Don't think about why he knows that. Political intrigue, yeah. Totally speculating, but I wonder if there's a spy in the, the survey corps. They were hiding Nick, no? So how did they how did they find him? And also you figure this kind of attention is not new. People have seen Irwin as a threat for a long time. In No Regrets, they placed a hit on Irwin through Levi, and that was way back when. Things haven't gotten better since then, they've only gotten worse because Irwin has more leverage. And Irwin's gotta be very aware of that game as well. He's probably playing a chess game on multiple fronts. You know, there's the whole Aaron, Titans, walls, but it also goes internally, the military police. He probably knows a lot more than 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 I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously. Did they just get raided? Wow. This is crazy. This is not like disagreements. This is like a hunt for them. Yeah, they're getting too close to something. This is very open hostility. Speaking of which. It's a bold move. Right, right. Feels like they're either getting desperate or they're overconfident. This could get real sticky real fast. <laughs> this could turn into them being like totally their own thing. Whoa, are we gonna get human villains? That would be awesome. I hadn't even thought about that, but like, you know, there's a lurking threat behind the scenes, but there aren't really villains, right? I mean, the villains we've had are, you know, for me, are not really full villains because they're cadets that I love, you know? And the threat is, like, the titans. But yeah, there's no doubt that this is a human thing. The whole thing is human. So having interesting villains would be great. So this card suggests that the reason the titans die if you sever the nape of their neck is because the nape of their neck is the human, which is pretty interesting. It's not as interesting as crackers, but it'll do. Isn't Levi famous? <laughs> Everyone is immediately swayed. <laughs> That's what he wants you to think. Yeah, it's funny. He gives people their own stuff back to them and they feel grateful. Yeah, there's got to be an agenda in this world. That. Thank you for, uh, for being so descriptive. Is that the king? He looks familiar. I'm getting overly suspicious again. Wow, they really just grabbed both of them? That was amazing. Oh, is that Armin in disguise? Oh, and it's not Aaron either. <laughs> oh no, he got, he got roped into this again? Poor John John. Ew. Oh my god, stop! Oh, it's Armin too! Oh, uh, I'm I'm uncomfortable at so many at so many levels at the same time. <laughs> Did this happen the first time? Poor Armin. 
<laughs> How have they not already? Okay, never mind. Armin really taking one for the team here. Clearly. So that explains why they were just walking out in the open. It was bait. Hope Armin gets a promotion for this. <laughs> um. Hope you like death. Yeah. Was that a gun? I didn't know they have guns. I know they have rifles, but for some reason it surprised the hell out of me that this guy like pulled out a handgun. Was like a double setup? Underground? Who is this guy? Speaking of guns. And speaking of villains. Damn, and there are more. He's got a big squad. <laughs> so already the tone of this season feels distinct. I was really thrown off at first by the opening and then like started in the episode with them just hanging out in the cabin. But it seems like the show has switched gears a little bit. Last season we found out that it's all human. And now this seems to be setting up to be the human arc. You got political maneuverings and you got this villain. This Kenny the Ripper, serial killer guy. Which adds an unexpected but kind of cool thing to it. I hadn't even thought about that, that we don't really have clear human villains. Another interesting thing is that Eren is not super heavily featured in this episode, but it seems like he actually has changed. It seems like he's grown a little bit. The way season two left off, he kind of had that meltdown, right? And my my feeling about it at the time was that it was it was one of the most pure forms of expression I'd ever seen from him. And he had that bonding moment with Mikasa, which was actually really nice, but I thought he would be derailed by that whole experience. Instead, it seems like he actually has somewhat settled into this life and is enjoying his his friendships? Am I setting myself up for failure here by by thinking that? <laughs> they all seem a little bit more adult and mature, but you know how it is. That moment of peace was probably the last moment of peace. Really, it seems like the, the scouts now are rebels. It feels like they're on their own or they'll end up on their own. Until the next Titan attack, then you know who will come calling. So very interesting start to season three. Not what I expected, but it feels like there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of cool things that can happen. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time for season three, episode two. <laughs>